Good Friday morning. It's coming up on 630 and we're checking weather and triple team traffic every 10 minutes on Channel 2 Action News this morning. She said the magic word, Friday. Right now, meteorologist Karen Minton tracking your Friday forecast including the weekend and severe weather center too, Karen. And we have some rain for part of our weekend and the other part will be dry. So let's start with now. We have low overcast, drizzle and some fog out there. I will show you where those isolated showers could pop up today. That comes up in 10 minutes. Right now checking 400 for your commute. We check in with Mark Aram. Hey, we've been dealing with trouble on 400 northbound, leaving Sandy Springs, heading out toward the Roswell area at times. All lanes are blocked. What's it look like now, Captain Hurd? Take a live look. Traffic tracker 2 shows you 400 northbound. The crash off to the side now between Abernathy and the North Springs Marta Station. Traffic moving smoothly again up 400 northbound, headed to Roswell. Was this crash affecting southbound traffic, Dr. Bull? Fortunately, it was just light enough and out there just short enough that southbound traffic unaffected, and it's fine on 400 south, south of the river, Mark. Excuse me, trip time only eight minutes to go between Holcomb Bridge and 285, so no alternate routes needed there. We'll have another look at the ride to work and school in under 10 minutes. Triple Team Traffic, Channel 2 Action News this morning. Breaking news in Cobb County as Triple Team Traffic has been telling us for the past hour, police are at Six Flags Drive investigating a person hit by a car. Michael Bushner just now arriving at that scene. Michael, what can you tell us? Carol, we just pulled up a few moments ago. Let me step aside and show you here. We're going to get a truck maybe in the way here, but we just pulled off at Six Flags Drive in the I-20 interchange, and we've confirmed that a pedestrian was struck in this area. Traffic is slowly moving through this area. Officers actually just cleared the scene moments ago. When we pulled up here, though, clothing in the roadway, officers standing around trying to figure out exactly what happened. Again, a pedestrian struck here at Six Flags Drive. Just off I-20, you can see a few officers still remain here. We don't know the condition of the person involved, and of course, we'll stay on top of the story. And as soon as we get more information, we'll pass it along to you. Also new from overnight, a bizarre arrest on the roof of a downtown Atlanta building. Now, police say that man you see right there and another climbed on top of a vacant building on Lucky Street after security guards spotted them trying to break into a car. Police called in firefighters for help. They used a ladder on a fire engine to gain access to the roof and arrest the suspects, who then had to use that same ladder to climb back down. 632 weather and traffic at the bottom of your screen. A popular Decatur grocery market wants to begin some major expansion plans. We obtained documents showing the DeKalb Farmers Market on Ponce de Leon Avenue wants to build a million square feet addition and warehouse. And some neighbors say they would support such an expansion if it's done the right way. I need to find out more about it. I need to find out where they're thinking of expanding to and what, you know, the impact on our neighborhood is going to be and the traffic around. The market's owners did not return calls for comment. The Atlanta Regional Commission says it is reviewing the plan. We check with Gwinnett County authorities overnight, and a caretaker accused of stealing money from her clients has bonded out of jail. A judge said bond at $120,000 for Seema BJ on Thursday. Now, BJ is charged with theft and exploitation of mentally disabled adults. Police arrested her last week and accused her of keeping her patients' debit cards and mistreating them by making them work. Explosive materials found on a Forsyth County road most likely got there on accident. That's according to the GBI. From News Chopper 2, you can see authorities investigating the area on Shady Grove Road where someone found the explosives on Thursday. They told us the explosives likely fell off a truck. This morning, detectives are working to identify skeletal remains found along I-20. Detectives closed off the area near Windsor Road Thursday and spent hours looking for clues. A DOT worker who made the discovery told us it startled him. It really scared me, but uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's part of the job. Detectives tell Channel 2 Action News they found a wallet nearby and are looking into whether foul play is involved. A nine-year-old victim of a dog attack remains in the hospital this morning, and News Chopper 2 flew over the scene at the McEver Vineyard apartment complex in Gainesville on Thursday. Police say the girl was carrying a pet cat and was trying to shield the cat from her own pit bull when the dog started biting her upper body. Doctors performed surgery on the girl last night. The final master plan is now in place for the Atlanta Beltline. Thursday, Atlanta city leaders adopted the plan that defines the type and scale of development, transportation, and parks within a half mile of the Atlanta Beltline corridor. 
The Beltline connects trails, transit stations, and parks in a loop around Atlanta. We're following a developing story, and the case that sparked explosive debates and rallies across the country could take a dramatic new turn this morning. George Zimmerman, the neighborhood watch volunteer who shot unarmed teenager Trayvon Martin, could be released from a Florida jail amidst worries for his safety. George Zimmerman's attorney believes his client will walk out of court after his 9 a.m. bond hearing. If released, his attorney hopes to keep court documents sealed in Zimmerman's location a secret. There's been so much animosity built up in this case so far that people who get that information may want to act on it prematurely, like addresses or witnesses, and that's a real concern. Law enforcement officials say there's only so much they can do to protect Zimmerman. There are also concerns about potential community violence. Things got heated during a discussion Thursday night on ways to improve operations in the city of Sanford in the wake of the incident. We recognize that that's a possibility and I'm prepared for that. How are you prepared? We are prepared. How? We are prepared. Trayvon's parents' attorney says racial profiling is what led to Martin's death and the stand your ground law could possibly exonerate his killer. Trayvon Martin's legacy won't stop with the conclusion of this criminal matter because if that happens, then we've lost. Zimmerman has requested to meet privately with Trayvon Martin's parents, but they have declined, saying it would be inappropriate to do so at this time. Stay with Good Morning America for the very latest in the Trayvon Martin case. And now that one judge has stepped aside, a replacement is ready to move forward. That's right after Channel 2 Action News this morning. New this morning, complaints a member of the new Black Panther Party is being held in jail illegally. He believes it's because of comments he made about the Trayvon Martin case. Days before his arrest in DeKalb County on gun charges, Hashim Zinga told the media the Black Panthers were offering a bounty for the citizen's arrest of George Zimmerman. Since his arrest, a judge has twice denied Zinga a preliminary hearing. 437, we questioned the mayor of coming about his decision to remove an activist with a video camera from a city council meeting. Would you apply the law the same way for us as you did for her? Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Nadia Tisdale's camera is rolling as know, Cummings police chief right. escorted as her out. Tisdale, who runs a government watchdog this blog, this is outraged. It's frightening. It's egregious. Uh, my rights were violated. The state attorney general's office is investigating whether Mayor Ford Gravitt broke the state sunshine laws. Mayor Gravitt said he feared allowing too many cameras in the meeting would pose a safety issue. A metro woman is blaming the Kennesaw business owner for stealing her mail and her identity. Ashley Schmidt had a Visa debit card sent to her, but someone stole it from her mailbox and then used it. Police say John Thon, who owns a mailbox express store, is the one who stole it. Investigators say Thon used the card at least 17 times. It appears a plant disease is behind a string of bald eagle deaths in Georgia. And Channel 2 first exposed the problem last May. Thursday, state authorities officially linked the deaths to algae-borne toxins connected to a weed. Now, that weed can be found at the Thurman Lake area near the South Carolina border where the eagles have died. Authorities say low water levels could have contributed to the algae growth. Several MARTA passengers are expected to be okay after a tree fell on their bus. And that tree fell Thursday morning as that bus was traveling down Campbellton Road. You can see the damage from News Chopper 2. We talked to a woman waiting at a bus stop when the tree came crashing down. It was slow moving, but it was fast at the same time. I never seen it like that. Six passengers were taken to the hospital. A MARTA spokesperson says the bus had little damage. Time now, 639. We're checking weather and triple-team traffic every 10 minutes on Channel 2 Action News this morning. And right now, meteorologist Karen Menton tracking a, a pretty interesting mix that we have for your Friday. Karen. It is kind of a mixed-up mess this morning. As we start out, we've got clouds and drizzle this morning. We've got a front on the way, and temperatures are... Pretty comfortable. We're 59 here in town, low 60s on the west side, mid 50s up toward Blairsville, where you've just dropped to 54 degrees. Now, no rain on the radar, but outside this morning we've had a mix of fog and drizzle as we check out your five day forecast. Temperatures are going to be 72 today, 73 tomorrow. Cold front's coming in, better chances of rain too, and possibly a rumble of thunder. And it's really in the first part of the day through early evening. And then it clears out. So Sunday, Looks great, but windy and cooler. Look at those morning lows from 60 on Saturday morning down to 49 on Sunday morning. So the chilly air is going to return.
We've got some delays now on 85. Let's get an update from Mark Arrow. Yeah, big backups. I'm talking about major backups now on 85 southbound trying to get into northern Gwinnett County. What's the situation, Captain Herb? No fun at all driving from Brazelton down toward the Swanee area. About four or five miles bumper to bumper traffic because of a stall tractor trailer. It's been taking up the left lane for a long time here in north Gwinnett County, uh, causing big delays trying to make it down to Hamilton Mill Road. How about below Hamilton Mill Road, Dr. Bull? Much better conditions there, 85 south south is a fine ride. In fact, lighter than normal south of 316 down to 285. Mark? Getting a little thick around Beaver Ruin Road. Take a line look at traffic tracker two. Starting to see a bunch up here and the HOT price has gone up. Now a dollar 45 between Beaver Ruin Road and Shalliford Road. I'm Mark Aram, Triple Team Traffic, Channel 2 Action News this morning. A student accused of posting a Twitter threat to blow up his school. He doesn't deny it, but what he says he really meant. Overnight chaos as a crowd of police search for clues in a deadly shooting. The dangerous defensive move the victim tried to make and... I didn't ask players to come over there with us. A well-liked high school football coach under investigation into recruiting violations and why he told us he stepped down even though he says he is innocent.